Hi there, today I am going to be chatting all about busting your skincare myths. I've had loads and loads of questions and there's lots of kind of knowledge out there that you might be going, mm, I'm not sure about this. So hopefully I'm going to kind of cover some of the, the common ones. So firstly, do I need a toner after I've cleansed? So old school routines, it was cleanse, tone, moisturize. We don't kind of need that routine anymore. That, that, that's kind of old school. Ingredients and products have moved on so much beyond that. Cleansing, yes, there's so many choices. It could be a cream cleanser, an oil, a balm, a wash. If you're using the kind of cream, oil or balm, you might choose to use some kind of tonic. But old school would have been, actually I'm using some kind of heavy cleanser. I want to wipe the residual of that off with some kind of astringent tonic and just freshen up the skin. That's not really the case. A lot of the oils and balms and creams, they're, they kind of quite effectively wash off, whether it's with a cloth or a muslin or a flannel or something like that. Or even some of them now, they change into, from that oily texture to when you add water, to almost like a, a, a tonic texture and then they naturally wash off. So there's less need now to be using a toner afterwards. If you're using a wash, you don't need a toner afterwards. Old school toners are really quite astringent. Um, you know, toners nowadays, they are a totally different animal. But the answer kind of, do I need to tone after cleansing? Not really. Do collagen drinks work? This is an interesting one for, for me personally. I'm often sent or asked to, to, to work with collagen drink brands. And from day one, I've always said no. I know they are huge business. There are so many brands out there and you know, there are obviously a number of them are really, really successful. But it's a question I get asked a lot. Do they actually work? I personally, I, I have um, inflammatory bowel disease, so not wanting to overshare, but it's relevant for this. If I was to, to consume collagen in those kind of drinks or things, it gives me a flare up. Um, and I know I'm not the only one that, that experiences that. So I personally, my body won't digest it properly and it kind of doesn't work for me. So I've personally not seen the benefits of doing it. From a more, if I put my science and kind of therapist head on, their collagen that's within the product that you're consuming, I would have thought that your your stomach acids and everything else are going to be breaking down some of those ingredients. So it's not as if you're drinking collagen is going straight, oh, boom, it's in your skin, which is where you want it. So I'm not saying that there isn't some kind of health benefit. I've never personally experienced the benefit and I've not seen maybe some of you guys have please you know if you have send them any of the scientific data to say yes by drinking or consuming collagen it's increased th that much collagen within my skin I would prefer to give the skin the right building blocks whether it's supplements or nutrition or, or food or whatever so that the body can naturally produce that extra collagen and elastin that you might be looking for. Um, and then through your topical skincare and your topical technical face treatments, whether that's at home or in clinic. Uh, so do collagen drink work? I'm not convinced they do. My foundation has SPF. Is that enough to protect me for the day? This is a question I get so many times. Firstly, a lot of the big companies uh, that you might find in a department store, they're now standardly adding SPF to their foundations. I feel this is wrong. I feel there is some controversy slightly over certain SPF ingredients. I'm not a fan of the chemical SPFs. I think we're kind of there's going to be some interesting information come out about that over the next few years. For the makeup brands to be taking that choice away from us, I've got a little bit of an issue with that. I know that's quite controversial, but I kind of, I'm just throwing that out there. I want my foundation to give me the, the color and the coverage that I want. So firstly, I think there's the, the question of 
should it be in there i want that choice so if you are going to be choosing some foundations go and go and ask at the counter there are certain big brands that i know that none of their foundations are spf free there are a few um but you need to go and ask can i can i have an spf free one and then it's giving you the choice to choose your own type of sun protection coming back to the question is it enough uh the answer is no because you're kind of putting your SPF or your colour on in the morning, it's not its key action within that foundation. So yes, it's giving some level of protection, but that's not gonna be the enough protection at kind of nine o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon. So you would need to be reapplying. But my preference is a separate moisturiser, a separate F SPF and a separate SPF free foundation. So next question, is organic skincare better than other skincare? Fundamentally, I'd say the answer is no. I am a huge, huge advocate of organic and natural skincare. I love it. I wish it got the results that I want it to. A big chunk of my career as a facialist, I kind of stepped away from the traditional skincare and went totally organic and natural. And that's kind of where, where I was, that was where my passion was. But it doesn't necessarily get the results. As I've aged, as my clients have aged, as my knowledge and training and learning has grown, it's very clear to see it doesn't necessarily achieve the results of some of the more scientifically based products. From a a sensitive skin point of view, I have experienced actually getting someone onto some organic product and it actually causing a breakout. There is aromatherapy in them. I love aromatherapy. It's, it's just so special. But some aromatherapy in your organic products can, to some people, cause skin irritations. So it's not necessarily better. I find it's different. The key thing for me is that it's it's clean. And I know that's a broad word, but I don't want a lot of the controversial ingredients. Um, so no, to go back to the question, is organic better? I'm gonna say it's different. Um, and some other methods of making products will probably give you better results. Next question, how do I close my pores? So firstly, you can't. The pores don't open and close. We genetically have the size of pores that we do. Um, you know, you don't kind of see people's faces with kind of pores going, you know, like this. You can soften what's inside the pore, and that's potentially where steaming and things like that, that has in the past been uh, quite widely used, and people, I know, as a teenager, I'd be steaming my face over a bowl of practically boiling water with the hope of kind of softening up my pores so that I could extract the spots that I got as a teenager. I don't recall that method actually working very well, to be honest. But pores don't open and close. You can reduce the visible appearance of by keep, keep, keeping them clean, cleansing effectively, maybe um, an acid kind of toner. There are certain slightly more technical treatments that you might find helpful as well. Hydrodermabrasion I quite like. I quite like skin needling, that's stimulating collagen production, but none of them are going to close your pores. It's kind of a physical impossibility. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, please do ask any questions below. I will see you soon.